Hey guys, welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. So I'm sorry if the lighting is a little bit weird, but I'm sat in my brand new reading room and I don't have a lot of options of how to film, like filming locations right now. The wall behind me is the wall that I have painted. I'm gonna go and put a second coat on that when I'm done with this vlog update. But uh, yeah, I need to get this vlog up and running. So as usual, I will start with my currently reading. So the first book we have that I'm currently reading is The Language of Thorns by Leigh Bardugo. I'm buddy reading this with Jade from Jade Ray Reads. We have been buddy reading the entire Grishaverse and the book that we're buddy reading for October is The Language of Thorns. Now we should have finished this days ago. I'm not sure if Jade has finished it, but I have two stories left, but they are quite long ones, which is why I haven't been making much progress, what with moving, etc. So I'm on page 144 of this. Problem that I'm kind of having at the moment is that I want to read this at nighttime in bed, but since Friday, every night has been spent doing things like painting or unpacking, etc, etc. The house is still an absolute state, let me tell you. I've hardly unpacked anything. You are actually on top of my bookshelves right now, which are lined down on the side which you can see there there is my phone and that is a massive stack of hardbacks which um are up against the radiator which is terrible for books because the heating is on but i don't have a lot of options right now so if you are unaware this is a collection of fairy tales set in the grishaverse and it's essentially just a collection of the lore and mythology of the world etc so i aim to have this finished this week i should get it finished at some point this week but i did start another book today because right at the end of last week's vlog i finished gone girl and the book that i've started is my reread of the bone season by samantha shannon i am participating in a read-along that is hosted by ashley from a frog through fiction where we will be reading one book in the bone season series that has been published so far every month so the bone season is october the mime order is november and then the song rising is december i have read all three before i wasn't going to reread this series until the fifth book was published and then the seventh book so i was going to do a reread for every odd numbered book and then i would be in line to read the series all the way through when the last book is published if that makes sense but it has been quite a few years since the third book was released and as i Ashley is hosting a read-along. It's called Bonathon, by the way. But as Ashley is hosting a read-along, I thought I would participate and I will also be co-hosting a live show for this. We don't have a date yet, but it will be early November, I believe. So I am around 40 something pages into this. All of my bookmarks are packed up, so I don't have a bookmark in it, but I'm 40 something pages into this. And this was Samantha Shannon's first book and it is the first book in a series that centers around psychics. It has a dystopian slash alternate history kind of setting that is very reminiscent to me at least of George Orwell's 1984. And we live in a society where it is a crime to be a psychic and because of that anybody who has any type of psychic abilities has kind of been forced underground into criminal gangs because that is the only place that they can be safe. So we follow our main character Paige who is quite a powerful psychic. She is one of the most powerful orders of psychics. They are ranked determined by their strength and she is the molisher for one of the most powerful crime gangs in London and one day when she encounters one of the people who seek out psychics in order to have them arrested and executed she kind of reveals her powers and she is captured and I won't tell you anything else about that because the story takes a twist that I didn't expect the first time that I read it so it's quite interesting to just go into it. Each book in this series is a little bit different. I can't really remember the plot of the second one but I know that this focuses on a very supernaturally sci-fi aspect of the plot and then the third book I remember focuses a lot on gang politics in the like criminal underworld of London. Somebody just walked past the window, I'm not used to this. And I can't, I really can't remember what the second one is, but each book kind of focuses on something a little bit different. And I really enjoy this series. What I will say about it that I noticed the first time around is that it definitely goes straight into the story. So you are stuck into the action straight away. There is a glossary at the back, which I did not know the first time I read this. I struggled all the way through, not really understanding what was going on. And then I discovered there was a glossary, which you know, not ideal, but there you have it. Something I have noticed in the first 40 pages that I have read is that the writing is a little bit melodramatic. Now, I have read Priory of the Orange Tree this year, so I know that Samantha Shannon's writing is not quite like that anymore, but yeah, the writing's a little bit melodramatic in this. Let's see if I can find a page. I actually sent a screenshot because I was reading this on script earlier today, so I sent a screenshot to Ashley of some of the 
melodramatic parts. I couldn't answer. The truth was dangerous. He might have sent me to Tower Hill himself if he knew what I really did. Maybe I should have told him the truth. Maybe it would have killed him. So um, yeah, the writing is a little bit melodramatic. I know that I like the, I, I know I definitely like the third book more than the first, but I can't remember much about the second as I keep illustrating. So these two books am I currently reading? If I could finish them both this week, that would be great. But as you guys know, I have a lot going on. So I'm making no promises, but I'll fill you in on my progress throughout the week. Now I do have something else to tell you, but my camera battery is flashing, so I will just swap that out. Okay, so the other thing that I have to talk to you guys about today is that I have a parcel. I actually received this on Friday, but as you guys probably know, I haven't really had much time. If you saw last week's vlog, you will have seen. But um, I left my scissors over there and I said that I would get them before I sat down, but I didn't. So I'm back in a sec. Oh, I lied, they were right next to me. So I got some parcel and this is from, how do I open it? This is from Gaston Luger, who very kindly reached out to me and asked if I would like to receive one of their products to sample and show to you guys. And of course, I said yes when I saw what their products were and saw how beautiful they were. So Gaston Luger are a Swedish backpack brand and they make absolutely beautiful, fashionable backpacks that are also very, very functional. They have like hidden pockets and stuff, which I will try and show you in a minute. But they have a few different ranges and then throughout all the ranges, they have like different colors and they kind of range from more casual backpacks to a little bit more fancy, but all of them are essentially built for purpose. They are extremely well structured and as I said they have all of the useful hidden products etc. Now I believe that all of their bags are vegan and cruelty free. This one in particular I know that the one that I have is PU leather so it's not manufactured with any animal products and I'm very excited because I need a new work bag because I, mine is from Primark and um, the structure in it is like tilting and um, kind of yeah, it, it's like, it's wonky. I'll see if I can show you at some point. It's not pretty and I definitely need a new one. So the backpack that I selected is the classy model in black. So as you can see, we have this very nice design. This is the PU leather and it is like super, super soft. And then it has the metallic features on the buckles and the little brand logo there. Excuse my nails, it's been a rough couple of weeks. But this one, I'm gonna, at some point this week, I will see how much I can fit into this and show you guys. But we have quite a spacious, oh wow. Okay, yeah, so you can't really see, but we have quite a spacious interior in here. All of their bags do also have a laptop slot, which fits 11 to 13 inch laptops. Mine won't fit, I've got a 17 inch, but I don't take my laptop anywhere anyway. I will be using that to put my book in. So when I was looking at the bags that they had on the website and picking the one that I wanted, I was concerned that this one wouldn't be big enough for me to take to work because I have at least one book and my lunch, and I have like quite a large lunch box as well as like my purse, which is again, huge and everything so I was concerned that this wouldn't be big enough but this actually looks to be the perfect size for me in the sizing across all of the backpacks this is pretty much bang in the middle of all of their size ranges I was going to go for the biggest one I'm now glad that I didn't and if you do like this but it is a little bit too big they do do a mini version as well. As I said, I would show you some of the hidden pockets. We have like the straps and everything, of course, it's a backpack. But there is also a little pocket on the back here that is designed to put your passport and like plane tickets and stuff in so that it is against your back so it's safe but also discreetly hidden in the pocket. And I do also believe that they have sent me a cute little travel pouch with it as well, which will be very handy. I will either put like my moisturizer and lip balms in it or I will put but my pens and stuff because sometimes I take my annotation supplies to work if the book that I'm reading is one that I'm annotating. So this is my beautiful, beautiful <laughs> classy backpack. I will try and show you guys as I'm using it. I'll show you how much I can fit in it at some point. But I will also, I think I'll be using this for a video. That is one of those secret videos I was talking about. It's not really a secret, it's just I haven't made it yet and I don't announce my videos ahead of time. But um, a bag would be perfect for that video. And that's all I'm saying about it. So if you do like this Gaston Luger backpack, I will of course put the link to the website down in my description box. And as well as that, I do have a 15% off discount code for you guys. The code is the books, which honestly, I don't know why I don't use that as my rep code more because it sounds a lot more like, not sinister, but a lot more bold, like, 
official, I guess, than just Becca, which is what I normally use. So my 15% off code is the books, and I will, of course, put the code down in the description box with the link if you want to go check them out. Like I said, I will check back with you at some point later in the week and let you know how much I can fit in this. I might do like a what's in my bag section and um, also like whether it's comfortable, I guess, and functional, which I imagine it is. So that is all I have for you right at this moment. I'm going to, this these bookshelves are like making an excellent table, by the way. My plan for the evening is to get my second coat on this wall. I'm not sure, like the shadows you can see is actually a reflection off the light. It's not patchy painting. They don't really need a second coat, but I want to put one on to be sure. I have an extremely patchy spot down in that corner, which is where Curtis did the undercoat. And then... <laughs> It's um, there's some plug sockets and stuff over there, so it's I'll show you, I'll show you. So as you can see over here, I've mainly gone in with the brush because of all the sockets and stuff, and it is streaky as hell. But everything else is like, like I said, like this is not a patchy bit, it's the shadow off the light. But um, it's all pretty even around here. I have been in with some polyfiller here because when I was painting, I noticed a couple of small holes, so they need painting over. But I mean, there you can see I've done a pretty good job for just undercoat and warm coat. So I am going to, ooh, now I'm in the shadows. <laughs> so I am going to go over all of this with a second coat and then the bookshelves should be going up tomorrow. That's my plan for tomorrow. And then Wednesday and Thursday I'll be painting the living room, I think. Okay, so my SD card just filled up and I had to delete something so I could finish this clip. But I'm going to go put a second coat on this and then I'm going to get on with doing some editing of last week's vlog because I have half of it imported, which is only 35 minutes unedited. But that doesn't include any of the moving stuff, so I feel like I have a lot of work to do on that. So I'm going to go and get on with some stuff because it's about 7.30 now. And I will check in with you guys later on with some sort of news. Maybe I'll be doing exciting house stuff. Maybe I'll be showing you how much fits in that bag. Or maybe I'll be giving you a reading update. That would be a novelty at this point, but maybe I will be doing that. Hey guys, so it is Wednesday now and I don't really have a reading update for you. I will give you one. I haven't read anything in this yet and I have been slowly, slowly reading The Bone Season. So The Bone Season, I am on page... 97 and i'm currently using a receipt as a bookmark because i still have not unpacked those so yesterday i told you that the bookshelves were going up the bookshelves have not gone up <laughs> yesterday i came home from work i had dinner i packed candle orders and then i went to my dad's to print the labels for the orders because did i tell you on monday that the printer is still set up there until we get internet i'm not sure but my printer is still there so if i need to print anything and then when i was there i filled my car up with a whole ton of stuff came back we'd run out of a couple of things then we went to Tesco and at that point it was like 9.30. So nothing was accomplished yesterday. Today I was going to kind of skip the bookshelves and try and get a first coat of paint on these walls. I'm in the living room right now. Um, everything's still a mess. I'll show you over there. So we've still got boxes everywhere. The TV's there. It's not set up or anything. Um, yeah. Everything is still pretty chaotic. So there's still a lot that needs to be done, but I did promise Curtis last week that we would go see Joker, which is the new Joker movie with Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker. I've pretty much just got home from work and soon we're gonna go out, we're gonna get dinner and then see Joker. So I don't think a lot is gonna be done tonight either, but I may have Friday off work. My boss said if it's quiet, we can have Friday off, which will give me some time to get stuff done and yeah. Like, I want to progress, like I want to do stuff, but with only having the evenings to do stuff, it is slow going because I don't know about you guys, but I tend to crash at around 7 p.m. and I have like a really tired spell until probably 7.30, 8 o'clock, and then I have like a whole burst of energy and I could literally go till two in the morning. But yeah, nothing, nothing has been done since Monday. I'm definitely going to get my shelves up this week and I'm going to get a coat of paint on at least two of the walls in here because the issue that we're having, I'll flip you around again. These cabinets that I bought off the owner are going to go onto this wall. Because of all the entryways into this room, we kind of have to have the TV over there because we have too many consoles to have it over there where the previous owner had it. This is going to have all of our board games and stuff in, but as I said, it is going over there. And because we need to move it, there's no point unpacking the board games, which are all pretty much in there. That's my candle making stuff. But all of the board games are in these boxes and 
we need to fill this cabinet but if we fill the cabinet it'll be too heavy to move so i need to paint these two walls so that that can be moved over there these boxes can be emptied and then the tv can be set up over here so that is my current predicament in this room in my reading room i kind of just need to get my bookshelves up before i can progress once the bookshelves are up and some of the boxes are emptied i can move all of the stuff that's against the other side of the wall to the side of the room near the door and then continue painting in that room i'm optimistic that i can get a lot done between tomorrow and sunday so throughout this vlog you should see quite a bit of an improvement with that um reading wise i don't think i'm gonna finish much this week but we will obviously see how that goes i've also have i zoomed in a bit Ooh. yeah i have so i'm probably just gonna give my hair a judge because it needs washing i think i haven't even had time to shower properly or anything it's it's not good so i think when we get back tonight i'm going to have a shower or a bath i don't want a bath yet i got all my lush bath bombs last week didn't i but i jumped the gun a little bit because i don't want to use them until i'm more relaxed because essentially at the minute i'm not having a bath or a shower to relax and enjoy the process i'm having a bath or a shower because i really fucking need to when i don't have a lot of time so i'll probably just have a shower tonight but i'm excited for when things are a little bit more settled and everything's a little bit more put together and then i can have a proper lush bath so i'm gonna go i'm gonna go put the dishes away i'm not sure if you saw the chairs over there that have a sheet hanging over them that's so that the sheet can dry because i washed it yesterday but that should be dry now so i'm gonna put the washing away and put the kitchen back together and then i'm gonna go and get some food and see a movie this wall and that wall they're looking a little bit patchy at the moment while they are still drying but i think it should be okay because when i did my second coat on my reading room it was a little bit patchy but then it dried like perfectly fine this wall is unfinished where is it this one um this one this one because i was just using the remainder of the paint that i had left on my roller etc as you can see i am absolutely covered in paint i said i have some in my hair as well um my clothes i am a very very messy girl right now so i think i'm gonna go try and wash some of this off and get into bed and read a little bit of language of thorns i don't even know what time it is i think it's around 11 p.m when i got home from work i had a nap and honestly that was great i got up i had dinner and i could have literally just gone straight back to sleep again but i wanted to get this done so when these two coats are dry we can start unpacking some of the stuff in here i will just show you like the chaos over here so this is what's happening over here right now so i do actually have it tomorrow off work is pretty quiet at the minute so my boss has said that we can have tomorrow off so i will be getting the second coat done in here and i may put up the bookshelves and i think curtis is going to organize the board games and stuff into the cabinets i, I do need actually i didn't notice because i don't notice these things but this skirting is kind of like an unfinished piney color which i don't really like pine um so i think i am going to paint that but i don't know whether to paint it in the same gray that is in my reading room which is a shade darker than this one or whether to paint it dark wood like stain it a dark wood color to match these cabinets as we kind of want the wood in here to be kind of dark 
with us having these cabinets i was going to go with like white wood or like a lighter wood maybe like a light oak but with us having those big cabinets i think um we're going to be going a little bit darker which is why we've gone a little bit lighter with the gray on the walls so i'm gonna go i'm gonna go get all of this paint off me i'm literally covered maybe do a little bit of reading and then get some sleep because i'm exhausted and i'm excited for a little bit of a light in tomorrow just about to start assembling my bookshelves over here but first i've done a very bad thing and i'm about to show you guys what it is and also like in just perfect coincidence i can confirm <laughs> that this bag fits a lot in it because um it is absolutely full of books because like i said i did a bad thing so this morning i started by putting the second coat on the walls in the living room so they should be all done they're just finishing dry and then nearly done and then I can take the masking tape off and stuff and we can start sorting out stuff in there but after I did that I decided that I would investigate my local library and that resulted in a big bag of books that I don't have time to read so in here I have five paperbacks for I got from the library I've been to charity shops today as well so I did pick up one book secondhand which wasn't so much of an impulse purchase because I do kind of need it I don't need any books but it's not completely random. So let's see what books I got from the library then. So first up, I got Soundless by Rochelle Mead. This is a young adult fantasy by the author of Vampire Academy, which is a series that I have read and really enjoyed. I did read it quite a long time ago, probably when I was around 19. And I do, unpopular opinion, I prefer the spin-off series Bloodlines because Adrian is my favorite character from that series. So this was released probably around 2015, I'm gonna say. Yeah, 2015. I always meant to pick it up and I never did. And because I saw it in my library, this isn't a huge priority for me to read, but it is kind of small, so I thought, why not? And all I know about this is, like I said, it's a young adult fantasy and it is set in a tone where there is no sound. I also picked up Disappearance at Devil's Rock by Paul Tremblay. Now, Paul Tremblay is a pretty popular, I wanna say, modern horror writer. I know that he's just released a collection of short stories called Growing Things, I believe. And there was like a huge PR thing, like I saw it on Booktube because there was a PR thing where booktubers and book bloggers were sent out the book with a seed and you could grow the plant from the seed. So I picked this up because I've been really interested in his work. Not too sure what this one's about, so I'll have a look. So what I can tell from the synopsis is that this follows a woman whose 13 year old son yeah goes missing and as she tries to find out what happens to him she finds out some sinister things about devil's rock which i believe is a park yeah the woods in a park so i would like to get to this in october i'm not going to because my copy tbr is huge and i'm not reading very much but obviously horror perfect october read the next one i don't know too much about but i have wanted to read it for a while and that is the serpent king by jeff zetner i know of this book from julie from pages and pens it's one of her favorite books. I do actually have a card in my bookopoly that's like booktuber's legacy books and the book that I have done for Julie is The Serpent King. All I know about this is that it is a very hard-hitting contemporary. Like the first line of the synopsis says Dill's father is in prison for an unspeakable crime and I believe that this boy has quite a violent home life. That is all I know about this. I'm happy to go into it knowing that I like hard-hitting contemporaries and Julie really likes it which is why it's on my radar. And then the last book I picked up from the library is quite an interesting one and it is I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. This is one of the sci-fi masterworks collections which are a collection of classic science fiction stories. This one is the book that the film I Am Legend starring Will Smith was adapted from. I do really like that movie although there is one scene that I do always skip but this again is quite a short one and I have been interested in checking out some of the sci-fi masterworks collection as an alternative for the classic space on my bookopoly board because as somebody who predominantly reads science fiction and fantasy I've been wanting to check out some classic sci-fi fantasy and horror as opposed to traditional classics like Pride and Prejudice and things like that. So I have wanted to collect a few books from this collection and 
as I saw this and it's a story that I recognize I thought it would be a good one to go into I know flowers for Algernon is also in the sci-fi masterwork collection which is another one that I want to read so this one just took my fancy today apparently so I took it out if you don't know what this is about this is a post-apocalyptic story about the last man alive that is pretty much all I really need to tell you. I'm actually surprised that this is so short because there is quite a lot that happens, although I don't like the way that the movie ends and I know that it's something, if the book ends the same way, which it probably does, it's something I'm not going to like about the book because it does have an ambiguous ending and I don't like those. I don't like ambiguous endings. And then the book that I picked up secondhand is A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms by George R. R. Martin. So this is part of the Game of Thrones series. And this is the story of Dunk and Egg, who are two characters in the history of Game of Thrones. Maester Aemon, if you're familiar with Game of Thrones, is the maester at the Night's Watch. And not too far into the first book, you find out that he is actually the last living Targaryen, as obviously there's Daenerys, but the general world don't know about Daenerys like the reader does but the general population of the world don't really know anything about her starting out. So Mr. Aemon is the last living Targaryen and I think that Aegon Targaryen who is Egg is his brother. Um, Mr. Aemon does talk about Egg a lot and this is the story of Dunk who is Sir Duncan the Tall and Aegon Targaryen. So this is like a little kind of novella. I'm not sure is it a collection of short stories? It might be. Yeah I think it's a collection of short stories that follow Duncan Egg and I also just noticed that it is illustrated as well. So as you guys know I am currently reading A Song of Ice and Fire. I need to start book five, Dance with Dragons, which is the last published book in the core series. I should be starting that this month, fingers crossed. I mean who knows at this point but when I finish that book I will just have Fire and Blood a Knight of the Seven Kingdoms and I think is the Ice Dragon set in the Game of Thrones world. I'm not too sure about that one. But yeah, this is just like an extra that goes with the Game of Thrones series. So those five books I've hauled today, um, which was stupid of me, but there you go. It's done. I already have seven books out from the library and I have like none of them on my TBR this month. So yeah. That's, that's just great. So I'm going to go and get some of these shelves up. I think we're just gonna get two over there because all three won't fit, which makes me sad. I don't know if I'm putting the other one, which is the one that my camera's currently sat on. I don't know whether that's going over there or whether it'll be going in the corner behind the camera when that is painted. But when I get these two shelves up and cleaned, then I can unbox the majority of my books because all of the paperbacks will go in those two shelves. So I'm gonna crack on with that. I'm gonna need to get my drill out because I don't know if you guys know, I have mentioned it before, but my bookshelves are actually DVD shelves. I actually prefer it that way because you can get a whole lot more on and they don't take up as much space because they're not as deep as traditional bookshelves. It does mean that because of the sizes of the shelves, I can't get any hardbacks on there, which is why I always struggle with hardbacks and you don't see any of my backgrounds, but I do like having DVD shelves for my paperbacks and then I'm going to have alternative shelving for my hardbacks. So yeah. Why was I talking about this? Oh yeah, so because they're not designed for books, the way that I put them up is they have like a strip of carpet so that the pressure doesn't dent the floor because these bookshelves are actually from a DVD store in the town that I've just moved from that was shutting down and my mum and dad picked them up for like really, really cheap. And yeah, they're screwed together <laughs> to keep them together because otherwise they kind of lean straight, whereas I want them pushed together so they form like a bookshelf if that makes sense. So they have a strip of carpet to stop them from scratching the floor with the bottoms and then a couple of wedges of wood that keeps them pushed back against the wall so that they're not like leaning upright and at a risk of tipping over. And then they are screwed together in the middle as well to make them a little bit more sturdy. So I'm going to first give them a bit of a clean because they're a bit dusty and a bit grubby and then see if I can get some books out today which will be very exciting. <laughs> upright. Upright. Do your side. It's a hammer. There's nails sticking out. I'm gonna put my hand in the nail. She's got it herself. Yeah, in my bottom. Yeah, see Pull the other one up. Okay. I'm not gonna have it. Cool. Ooh, I don't 
So there we have it, the shelves are up. I do have um, a gap up here, but there are some books that are on my TBR that aren't on the shelves yet, and yeah, I'm guessing I just put them away differently than the way they went up, so they're a little bit odd. But then I do still have all of these paperbacks that I took off my shelves a while ago to make a little bit more space. They do all need to go back on or somewhere so yeah the shelves are done which means that i can actually officially film videos again which is great i don't think i'll be filming any videos for a while um the next video that i have to film will be my november bookopoly obviously we have quite a little bit of time till i get to that so yeah my shelves are up and they're looking beautiful hey guys just a real quick little check-in it's saturday night now i have been to my dad's today to pick up a whole ton of furniture and that pretty much took up all of the day we have sorted out a lot of the clothes upstairs because we brought the drawers that we needed so i've spent a lot of my evening sorting out clothes and as you can see here i have the sofa for my reading room now i'm gonna put a throw over it so it like actually matches the decor until i actually manage to buy a sofa but i also brought let me swivel this bookshelf now there is an issue with this this was bought at auction by my mum and dad and it is actually the bookshelves that go at the end of the seats in a church at the end of the pews where all of the hymn books etc are stored now it is a really nice piece of furniture i am going to paint it white eventually to match everything in the room but for now i need to get all of the books that you can see stacked up over here to this side of the room because as you can tell, all of these red walls still need painting. So as I have brought this, I've just cleaned it up and I'm going to be putting my hardbacks on it. Now, the only place the hardbacks are gonna fit on this is this bottom shelf here and some will have to go probably sideways on these shelves but as i said i am going to be putting shelves in the this is really hard to do in the alcoves and they are going to be my author shelves so like jay christoph will have a shelf sarah j mass will have a shelf and maybe i'll have like a few shelves for miscellaneous hardbacks and stuff but right now i need to get everything from over that side to over this side of the room so i can hopefully start painting that tomorrow and then by midweek fingers crossed that should all be painted and then i will just have the chimney breast to do i'm saving that till last because i have to take the mirror off and i'm not looking forward to that because it's a huge ass mirror and it's old so it'll probably be heavy so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna get most of if not all of these hardbacks onto this bottom shelf and stack some of them sideways and we'll see how much i can get on
Hey guys, so we are past midnight now, so it is technically Monday, but I've just come to wrap up this vlog and I do actually have a proper reading update for you guys because earlier today I did finish The Language of Thorns by Lee Bardugo. I'm going to be giving this four stars. I did really, really enjoy it. My favourite stories in this were The Witch of Dover by far was my favourite in the entire collection. And I did also really enjoy the last two stories in this. The first of those was called, was it The Little Soldier, maybe? The Soldier Prince. And then When Water Sang Fire. When Water Sang Fire was a really long one. And I did read the author's note at the end, but I did also kind of gather when reading it. That is a retelling of the origin of Ursula. So if you have read Sea Witch by Sarah Henning, which I have, I didn't really like that book at all, but that does also tell the story origin story of the sea witch in Hans Christian Andersen's Little Mermaid. I don't think that the witch actually does have a name in the original but obviously Disney gave her the name Ursula. So when I was reading that I did kind of notice the parallels with The Sea Witch by Sarah Henning and I did really really enjoy that story. It was much better done than Sea Witch. I did not like Sea Witch at all but I did really enjoy When Water Sang Fire in this collection. So I'm giving this four stars mainly because this did not absolutely it did kind of blow me away in that you guys know that i'm not a huge fan of short story collections and i did think that my feelings towards this would be different because they are fairy tales and they are fairy tales that are both original while still being not inspired by but very reminiscent of traditional fairy tales but they have a modern twist where for example the evil stepmother is not always the evil character in these fairy tales it's a character that we would believe is a safe character or that fairy tales would spin to be a safe character even though they maybe perform some questionable actions at the beginning so I did really enjoy this and I think that this is a book that I will definitely reread if I ever have kids and that's a big if I would read this to them however while I do think that this is suitable for children I would say older children maybe at least 10 upwards because while it is not necessarily implicit and it is told and hinted at in a roundabout way there are themes in this of sexual assault and abuse but then if you do read the traditional original fairy tales they are also very dark and contain a lot more dark topics than we kind of remember them containing but yeah four stars just because not all of the stories in this i absolutely loved but there are definitely a couple that will stick with me and i really really enjoyed this I actually really really loved it so I finished that which was not on my Bacopoli TBR but it was my buddy read with Jade for the month also I've noticed actually um I don't know if you guys have noticed but when I refer to people that I refer to a lot for example Cody or Gav or Ashley I may say their channel name the first time I mention them in a video but then I will just refer to them by their name and I just I always seem to say Jade from JD Gray Reads every time I mention Jade I'm not sure why but I noticed I think it was when I was editing last week's vlog I noticed that every time I say Jade I say Jade from Jade Ray Reads. Anyway completely random information. The other book I was reading is The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. I have started editing this vlog. I've only edited up to Thursday so I'm not sure if I've told you where I'm up to in this since I haven't read any for a few days but I'm on page 187 of this. I am enjoying it. I know I said at the beginning of the week that the writing is a little bit melodramatic and wow this book makes me really orange. So earlier in the week I said that the writing in this was kind of melodramatic. I have also noticed that there is a lot of telling and not showing in this and I've said it before and I still agree with this I don't mind an info dump in a lot of books so for example Brandon Sanderson info dumps a lot right at the beginning I've only read two of his books no I've read one book and two novellas and he does info dump but not in a way that's super obvious at least not to me and generally in high fantasy stories I don't mind an info dump too much but this is definitely showing not telling so every couple of pages something will happen and then that will lead into a description of for example a political system or something like that. This is Samantha Shannon's debut and I know that her writing does get better because I have read every book that she's published so far but it is just something I've noticed about this. I'm interested to see whether my rating will change on rereading this. I'm not sure what I rated it originally. It was either a four or a five star but when I reread books I don't tend to change my ratings but that is normally because I'm reading something that I read when I was around 17. Now I believe that I read this when I was 22 
22 or 23 so it's not too long ago for example when I reread the Hunger Games I didn't alter my rating because at the time that I read it originally I was at the age that the books were targeted for so when I'm rereading something like that I don't tend to change my rating because I'm at a different place in my life now whereas at the time when I read it originally I was the person who was meant to read that book now with this it's a little bit different because I am still the target audience for this series so I'm interested to see if my rating will change I'm not sure how I feel about changing my rating if I am going to whether it should kind of be like when I reread other stuff or whether I should be changing my ratings for books like this so we'll see when I get to the end of this I'm optimistic that I can finish this next week but we'll see how I go and yeah I haven't started anything new so that is it for my reading update next week should be a little bit exciting because on saturday i am going to the lee bardugo sign in with ryan i'm not sure if ashley's coming because she was previously unavailable that weekend but she's changed her plans so she's trying to get a last minute ticket so if you do have a spare ticket for the lee bardugo sign in in leeds on the 26th of October which will be like three or four days after I post this video then please let me know because Ashley from Frolic Through Fiction is looking for one. So that is about it for this week's vlog. It's been an eventful one. I've just been looking at some of the footage and I thought this vlog was kind of all over the place because I'm so busy like I don't remember what I filmed at all until I put it into my editing software and I'm like oh yeah cool I remember that. So yeah it's been a pretty eventful one. I got my bookshelves up. I have also actually I have painted the rest of the red wall in the reading room apart from the chimney breast white so I've done the undercoat on all of those I haven't done the chimney brush yet because I need to take the mirror off which I think I mentioned yesterday so when I've painted all of the walls gray and got all of the like when the rest of the room is fully painted I'll be able to move everything away from the chimney breast and then get that painted navy so yeah I've painted it all white I'm not going to show you now because I'm in bed <laughs> but I will show you at the beginning of next week's vlog all of that is white and the grey, the first coat of grey, fingers crossed, will be going on tomorrow and then I'll put the second coat on on Tuesday and then that will all be done. Honestly, I'm really enjoying painting, I'm really loving it, but at the same time, I've painted half of the walls in each room and now I'm, I just, I can't be bothered. Especially in the reading room because it needs three coats because of the white undercoat and I just... <sighs> I just want to sit in it and read now especially now that my sofa's in and I can't but I'm rambling this was literally supposed to be like a five minute update and we're nearly at 10 minutes so that is it for this week's vlog thank you so much for watching if you made it this far please don't forget to like this vlog if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna and I will see you guys next week bye oh you bite your friend like chocolate you say you're a go when nobody knows With guns in under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no